Dear students, in this session we discuss about instrumental methods of analysis. As all of you know, instrumental methods, methods of analysis is nothing but the technique or the procedure in which we take the help of various <coughs> we take the help of various chemical instruments in order to analyze the given chemical sample, in order to find out the concentration of any give, given chemical species in a chemical solution, we take the help of instruments, thereby we analyze the sample. That is why it is generally called as instrumental methods of analysis. And in the instrumental methods of analysis, we just go through brief introduction about the advantages of instrumental methods of analysis. Then we discuss about colorimetry, flame photometry, potentiometry and conductometry. So, there are so many other instrumentals, uh, instruments we are we are we use in chemistry or chemical analysis, but out of various instruments we use, uh, these four instruments we are going to discuss uh, from the point of view of syllabus. One uh, theory, instrumentation, and applications of colorimetry, flame photometry, potentiometry, and conductometry. Under conductometry, we discuss about strong the conductometric estimation or conductometric titration of strong acid with a strong base, weak acid with a strong base and a mixture of strong acid and a weak acid with a strong base. So, these are the uh, few things we are going to study under instrumental methods of analysis. And here in this session, we, uh, we try to understand first very basic thing, what are the advantages of instrumental methods of analysis? As it is already discussed. Uh, we use some instruments in order to analyze the chemical sample, in order to find out the concentration of any, give, any given chemical species in a given chemical solution, we take the help of instruments. So, that is why it is called as instrumental methods of analysis. Apart from instrumental methods of analysis, in order to analyze various chemical samples, we use uh, 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 volumetric analysis, gravimetric analysis, etc. Whereas, the major advantage of instrumental methods of analysis are that is one is it is very fast that is we can carry out the analysis in a short span of time. It is more accurate compared to the regular methods and it is it most another advantage is it requires very small quantity of the chemical species or chemical analyte. So, therefore, it is going to be uh, environmental friendly also because it, ta it takes less time and also it requires very small quantity of the chemical samples. Therefore, the major three advantages of uh, uh, chemical uh, instrumental methods of analysis are one is it is faster, it is more accurate and we need very small quantity of the chemical compounds for analytical process. And here we discuss about potentiometric titration. In this session, we discuss about potentiometric titration under instrumental methods of analysis. So, one of the instruments we use for analyzing the samples is potentiometer. So, by using potentiometer, we carry out titration and that titration is generally called as potentiometric titration. And other way around, what do we mean by potentiometric titration more specifically is in normal titrations what we do? In normal titrations or volumetric titration techniques what we do? We find out the end point of a titration by observing the color change with the help of the indicator, right? Whereas, a potentiometric titration is the one where end point of the titration is found out by observing the change in potential during the course of titration. So, we carry out titration. While carrying out the titration, we observe the change in potential. By observing the change in potential, we find out the end point of the titration. Therefore, it is called as potentiometric titration. Therefore, a potentiometric titration is the one where we find out the end point of the titration by observing the change in potential during the course of titration. If you take the example of a redox reaction, in a redox, when we are, imagine we are carrying out a redox titration with the help of uh, potentiometer. So, in a redox titration, uh, in a redox reaction in general, so reduced form will become oxidized form along with the release of electrons. For example, ferrous becomes ferric, right? Uh, during the oxidation process uh, by the action of uh, potassium dichromate as an oxidizing agent, if you are carrying out uh, FAS versus potassium dichromate titration with the help of potentiometer, the reaction occurs is ferrous is oxidized to 
ferric. Ferrous is the reduced form, ferric is the oxidized form. So, in this case, the potential of this process or potential of any redox reaction is calculated, can be calculated, can be found out by using the Nernst equation E is equal to E naught plus 0 0.0591 0 by N log of oxidized form by reduced form. For example, if we take potentiometric titration of uh, FAS against potassium dichromate, in that case oxidized form is Fe3 plus, reduced form is Fe2 plus. So, so when you carrying when you are carrying out the titration what happens so gradually concentration of the oxidized form increases concentration of the reduced form decreases along with carrying along with the occurrence of the titration so thereby the potential changes thereby the potential changes so therefore in this way the potential of the system potential of the entire process gradually changes along with the occurrence of the titration along with when we are carrying out the titration gradually potential changes because during the titration during the titration the concentration of oxidized form and concentration of reduced form changes when these concentrations will be changing the potential also changes because potential of the redox process is governed by this particular equation so therefore by observing therefore during the process of the titration potential changes. So, changes in potential are more rapid in the vicinity of the end point. That means what? Imagine you are starting the titration. So, imagine the titration of FAS versus potassium dichromate taken in the burette. You keep on adding potassium dichromate into the uh, conical flask uh, conical flask containing ferrous sulphate. So, potassium dichromate oxidizes ferrous to ferric. So, therefore, gradually what happens? Concentration of ferric reduced form decreases, sorry, concentration of ferrous reduced form decreases, concentration of ferric which is the oxidized form increases. So, therefore, when the concentration of oxidized and reduced form changes, potential also changes. And at the vicinity of the end point, at the vicinity of the end point, when you come near the end point during the course of titration, the, the potential changes more rapidly. That is the indication that the end point is more near, the end point is more near. So, therefore, in this way, we can find out the end point of any titration, any suitable titration by observing the change in potential during the course of titration. So, this kind of the titration is what we call as potentiometric titration. So, uh, after the completion of titration, what we do? End point is actually much more accurately determined by plotting the graph of change in potential versus volume of the titrant, volume of the titrant. We uh, plot the graph, with the help of the graph, we find out the end point more accurately. Therefore, overall, a potentiometric titration is the one where we find out the end point of a titration by observing the change in potential during the course of titration. So, when we carry out the titration, uh, when we took the example of redox reaction, when we carry out the titration, the potential of the redox reaction is governed by this Nernst equation E is equal to E naught plus 0 0.0591 by N log of oxidized form reduced form. So, during the course of titration, these concentrations will be changed. When, the, when these concentrations are changed, potential automatically changes and the change in potential is more rapid near the end point, thereby we can find out the end point of a titration by observing the change in potential and finally, we find out the end point, exact end point by plotting the graph of change in potential versus volume of the titrant. So, this is how we can find out the end point of a titration by observing the change in potential during the course of titration. In order to note down in order to identify the change in potential during the course of any potentiometric titration, we take the help of an instrument called as potentiometer. And this potentiometer, this device potentiometer is connected to a combination of platinum and calomel electrodes whenever we are trying to find out a potentiometric, potentiometric redox titration. When we try to carry out a potentiometric redox titration or a redox titration potentiometrically when we try to carry out. So, this potential, the device uh, we use is called as potentiometer. This potentiometer will be connected to a combination of platinum and calomel electrodes. 
okay and out of this uh, these platinum and calamond electrodes together will be detecting the change in potential during the course of titration or whatever the change in potential occurs in the reaction mixture in the reaction mixture that will be detected by the combination of platinum and calamond electrodes out of these two electrodes calamond electrode acts as a reference electrode and platinum electrode acts as a indicator electrode and being an indicator electrode platinum electrode is the one which indicates the change in potential during the course of titration so while carrying out any redox titration potentiometrically we use the device potentiometer and to the device potentiometer we connect the combination of calomel and platinum electrodes and out of these two electrodes calomel electrode acts as a uh, reference electrode and platinum electrode acts as an indicator electrode being an indicator electrode it indicates the change in potential during the course of titration and the change in potential during the course of titration uh, that means what uh, imagine here you are taking the ferrous ammonium sulfate solution here in the burette you are taking potassium decrement you keep on adding 0.5 ml of potassium decrement into the FA solution each time and stirring the reaction mixture, reaction takes place thereby potential changes. Okay, every time when you keep on adding potassium decrement into certain amount of potassium decrement into the FA solution, the potassium decrement oxidizes some ferrous ions into ferric ions, thereby the concentration of oxidized species and reduced species changes, thereby there is a change in potential. And that change in potential is detected by the electrodes, combination of platinum and calomel electrodes and once they detect the change in potential that will be converted into electrical signal by the potentiometer. So, these two electrodes are connected to potentiometer and these two electrodes together detect the change in potential occurring in the system, occurring during the course of the titration, occurring in this reaction mixture and they send the electrical signals to the potentiometer and that in the in the potentiometer those electrical signals are converted into digital signals and finally which will be displayed in the digital form which be, which will be digitized which will be uh, displayed in the display window in the digital form thereby this potentiometer shows us the change in potential during the course of titration for example here it is show, it is being shown as 631 631 millivolts is the potential of the reaction mixture at this point at this point of time when you add another 0.5 ml of or another 0.1 ml of or another 1 ml of potassium decrement into the FA solution if you have taken FA here that the potential may be changed further to 680 or 670 or whatever it is so in this way the potential of the reaction mixture potential of the entire setup we can say uh, uh, is detected by change in potential overall is detected by the combination of calomel and platinum electrodes and that will be, will be sent to the potentiometer in the form of electrical signals and these electrical signals in the potentiometer are converted into digital signals and finally the potential of that system at that point of time will be displayed in the display window in the digital form. So, thereby we can note down the potential change in potential during the course of titration during the course of titration. So, this is the overall way how a potentiometer works, how a potentio, potentiometric titration uh, takes place thereby how we can able to find out the end point of a titration by observing the change in potential. So, overall we can find out the end point of a titration potentiometrically by observing the change in potential during the course of titration because during the occurrence of some titration reactions there will be change in potential and how it is so we understood by taking the example of a redox reaction okay and this change in potential during the course of a titration is detected by the combination of platinum and calomel electrodes if it is redox reaction Okay, if it is uh, acid base reaction, if it is precipitatory, precipitate reaction, we have to go for some other electrodes. So, when it is acid uh, redox reaction, we 
the change in potential during the course of titration is detected by the combination of platinum and calomel electrodes. These platinum and calomel electrodes together are connected to a device called as potentiometer. These electrodes detect the change in potential and send the electrical signals. In the, the change in potential is sent to the potentiometer in the form of electrical signals. Inside the electric uh, potentiometer, the electrical signals are converted into digital signals and finally, the potential of that system at that point of time will be displayed in the digital window in the display window in the form of digital form in the in the digital form so this is how we find out the change in potential during the course of titration by finding out the change in potential we can find out the end point of the given titration cleared no and coming to the applications of this potentiometric titrations so uh, this potentiometric method can be used to find out the end point of redox, re redox titrations, precipitation reactions as well as acid based titrations. Not only for redox titrations, this potentiometric method we can use for finding out the end point during acid based titrations and also during precipitation titrations along with redox titrations. And so there are some titrations, there are some uh, chemical reactions where the react tents may be colored. In that case, it will be difficult for us to find out the end point by a normal volumetric method. In some other cases, we may, we, we, we may not have a suitable indicator to find out the end point. In both these cases, we can go for potentiometric titration. So, there are some titration experiments, there are some chemical processes where one of the chemicals may be colored or the, both the chemicals may be colored. In that case, by observing the change in color, thereby to find out the end point may become difficult. Similarly, in some of the uh, chemical reactions, we may not find a suitable indicator. In that case, we can utilize the advantage of potentiometric titration. So, one of the classical examples for uh, the potentiometric titration is the estimation of amount of ferrous ammonium sulphate by titrating against standard solution of potassium dichromate. So, this we, we are going to discuss now. That is, you you will be having standard solution of potassium dichromate and you will be given with a solution of ferrous ammonium sulphate, but you do not know the normality of ferrous ammonium sulphate solution. You also do not know, uh, when you do not know the normality, you will also be not knowing how much of ferrous ammonium sulphate is dissolved in 1 liter of the given solvent or 1 liter of the water, whatever it is. That means overall, we do not know the concentration of ferrous ammonium sulphate, but we know the concentration of potassium dichromate. So, by using the standard solution of potassium dichromate, we can estimate ferrous ammonium sulphate solutions concentration by using potentiometric titration method. So, now we will see how to find out the concentration of ferrous ammonium sulphate by using potentiometric method. So, in this method, what we do here is, what we do here is, we take, we fill the standard solution of potassium dichromate in a burette. In a burette, we are going to take the standard solution of potassium dichromate and we pipette out 25 cm cube of FAA solution into a beaker and into that beaker, we add two test tubes of dilute sulfuric acid. So, in a beaker, what we do? In a beaker, we take 25 ml of FAA solution whose concentration is not known to us. To that beaker containing 25 ml of FAA solution, we will be adding two test tubes of dilute sulfuric acid. The role of sulfuric acid is to provide acidic medium for potassium dichromate because all of you know that potassium dichromate is a very good oxidizing agent in the acidic medium. So, therefore, we add two test tubes of dilute sulfuric acid. Then what we do? We dip both the electrodes. What are those electrodes? Platinum electrode and calomel electrode. We dip both the electrodes into the beaker into the into the solution FAS into the into the mixture of FAS and sulfuric acid solution taken in the beaker and we uh, and these two electrodes are already connected to the potentiometer already connected to the potentiometer switch on the potentiometer note down the potential of this FAS solution FAS plus sulfuric acid solution note down the potential because the moment you dip, you dip the you dip, you dip two electrodes, platinum and calum electrodes into the solution of FAS and sulfuric acid, the electrical signals are being sent and the machine, potentiometer machine will show the potential of this particular solution. 
So once you note down the potential, potential of the solution, then what you do? You add 0.5 ml of potassium dichromate into the beaker containing FAS and sulfuric acid. The moment you add 0.5 ml of potassium dichromate into the beaker containing FAS and sulfuric acid, what happens is the potassium dichromate oxidizes ferrous to ferric in the presence of sulfuric acid. When some of the ferrous is oxidized to ferric, naturally concentration of ferric increases, concentration of ferrous decreases to certain extent, thereby potential changes. The change in potential will be shown by the instrument. That means the moment you add the 0.5 ml of potassium decrement into FAS solution, what happens? Potassium decrement oxidizes, oxidizes some of the ferrous, ferrous to ferric. And you know that, and you know that uh, potential for this particular process, any redox reaction is given by E is equal to E naught plus 0 0.0591 by N log of oxidized state by reduced state. Here, out of ferrous and ferric, ferric is the oxidized state, ferrous is the reduced state. So, therefore, what happens? When you keep on adding 0.5 ml of potassium decrement into the beaker containing ferrous sulfate or ferrous ammonium sulfate, potassium decrement oxidizes ferrous to ferric in the presence of sulfuric acid. Therefore, every time you keep on adding potassium decrement 0.5 ml each time, more and more ferrous will be oxidized to ferric. So, therefore, if you go back to Nernst equation, E is equal to E naught plus 0 0.0591 by N log of oxidized, by red, oxidized state by reduced state, log of ferric by ferrous. So, therefore, gradually numerator concentration increases, denominator concentration decreases, therefore, potential gradually increases. That means, Therefore, every time when you add 0.5 ml of potassium decrement into the reaction mixture, you will be observing a change in increase in potential. Potential increases and then becomes constant. So, you note down in a tabular column, you note down. So, 0.5 ml potassium decrement you are adding, what is the potential? 1 ml, next 0.5 ml, what is the potential? Next 0.5 ml, what is the potential? You note it down and you also calculate delta E by delta V. Delta because we are going to plot a differential graph to get the accurate result. So, therefore, you also calculate delta E by delta V. So, when you are adding, when you are adding potassium, uh, when you are adding potassium dichromate from the burette into the ferrous ammonium sulfate solution, what reaction takes place? As I already told you, ferrous becomes ferric. Pot dichromate oxidizes ferrous to ferric itself get reduced to chromium form, chromium 3 plus form in the, in the presence of sulfuric acid. So, this is the reaction occurs when you are adding potassium dichromate from the burette into the ferrous ammonium sulfate solution. When you keep on adding potassium dichromate, potassium dichromate oxidizes ferrous to ferric. Each time it oxidizes more and more ferrous to ferric. This is the and itself get reduced to chromium 3 plus form. So, this, therefore, we call this, this reaction as a redox reaction. So, when it is happening, the potential of the reaction in the beginning is decided by, is governed by this particular Nernst equation. E potential, potential of ferrous to ferric, ferrous by ferric is equal to standard potential of ferrous by ferric 0 0.0591 by n. Why it is n or 0 0.0591 by 1? Why it is 1? Because from ferrous to ferric, there is only one electron change, log of ferric by ferrous concentration. Ferric is the oxidized state, ferrous is the reduced state, reduced state. So, therefore, the in the beginning, when you keep on adding potassium dichromate into the fer fer ferrous ammonium sulfate solution, potential more and more ferrous becomes ferric. Therefore, potential of the entire process, potential of the system is governed by this particular equation. And at certain point of time, and at certain point of time, all ferrous becomes ferric, right? All ferrous becomes ferric. When all ferrous becomes ferric, reaction is over, reaction is over, there are no ferrous ions. So, therefore, at that point, the potential of the system is governed by this particular equation. That is, uh, pot, uh, potential of dichromate by chromium ion is equal to standard potential of dichromate by chromium ion 0 0.05 plus 0 0.0591 by 6. Why it is 6? When dichromate changes to chromium, it is, here it is the oxidation state of uh, uh, chromium here in the dichromate is plus 6, plus 6 becomes plus 3, but there are 2 chromium, therefore totally 
there is an oxidation state, state change in uh, up to uh, up to our, up to 6 therefore it's going to be 0.059 by 6 log of dichromide by chromium so therefore when you are carrying out the titration of FAS versus potassium dichromate, you keep on adding potassium dichromate 0.5 ml each time into the reaction mixture. Potassium dichromate oxidizes ferrous to ferric, thereby concentration of ferric gradually increases, concentration of ferrous gradually decreases, thereby there is a gradual increase in the potential that is shown by the potentiometer, you are noting it down. Every time you are adding 0.5 ml and you are noting down the change in potential. At certain point all ferrous becomes ferric. When once all ferrous becomes ferric, reaction is over. At that point the reaction or the potential is governed by the this reaction where dichromate to chromium reaction that uh, the potential is governed by this particular reaction. So therefore, therefore when you plot a graph or when you are carrying out the reaction as we already understood, when you keep on adding potassium dichromate 0.5 ml each time, there is a gradual increase in the potential. For example, in the beginning, the potential shown by the potentiometer in the beginning of the titration is of suppose let's say it's 300, then it may become 325. After 0.5 ml again, it may become 360, then it may become 395. Like that, every time when you keep on adding 0.5 ml potassium dichromate, more and more ferrous becomes ferric, potential gradually increases. Every time you may observe the increase. Uh, up to around 30 units or 40 units, 50 units, 25 units, etc. But once all ferrous become ferric, once you reach the end point, you will be observing a sudden jump in the potential, rapid change in the potential. So that is the reason, for example, rapid change in the potential, thereby the potential may be jumped by uh, and, uh, by uh, around 200 units, 250 units or 150 units, etc. So in the beginning, every time the potential is changed by an extent of 20 units, 30 units or 40 units, but at the end point, you will be observing a sudden jump in the potential of around 150 units or 200 units, etc. That is the reason when you plot a graph of change in potential versus volume of potassium decremate, see observe here, you are getting a gradual increase in the potential. You are observing gradual increase in potential. Every time you are observing a increase in potential by 20, 30 or 40 units, but at equivalence point, near the end point, you are, you are observing a sudden jump in the potential. Why you are observing the sudden jump in the potential? Because as we already discussed, in the beginning, when as long as ferrous ions are there in the reaction mixture, the potential of the system is governed by this particular equation, ferrous to, ferrous to ferric this particular equation where for ferrous to ferric the standard potential value is 0.75 millivolts or 0.75 volts, 0.75 millivolts for ferrous to ferric. Once all ferrous is oxidized to ferric, once the reaction is over, the potential of the system is governed by dichromate to chromium process, dichromate to chromium system. For this, the potential, standard potential is 1.33 volts. That means, Till the reaction is over, the potential is governed by ferrous to ferric, where the potential is 0 0.75 volts, 0 0.75 volts, and suddenly once the reaction is over, once all ferrous become ferric, the potential is governed by dichromate to chromium, where the standard potential for that is 1.33 volts. Therefore, suddenly the potential is changed from 0 0.75 to 1.33, then the remaining thing. So, that is the reason you will be observing a sudden jump in the potential near the end point. Therefore, whenever you plot a graph of potential versus volume of potassium decremate, you will be observe, you will be getting a graph like this, gradual increase in the potential and sudden jump. You are going to get a graph like this. So, after plotting this graph, you plot another graph of a, a differential graph, another graph of delta E by delta V versus volume of potassium decremate delta E by delta V versus volume of potassium decremate taken in the uh, taken in the burette. So, once you plot a graph like this, you will be getting most of the points near the x axis, most of the points near the x axis, only one point towards the top of the y axis, towards the top of the y axis. So, then what you do? You put the points, then you plot a graph to get a curve like this. When you plot a graph, you may miss some of the points here because you need not to point, you need not to join all the points. So, just go for a smooth curve like this you, because for us this point is very important. So, you plot a graph like this and from the peak of the graph, 
draw a perpendicular to from the peak of the curve draw a perpendicular to touch the x axis where it touches the x axis this is nothing but equivalence point this is nothing but equivalence point we are calling it as v1 cm cube or ve cm cube but or, or whatever it is and this is nothing but this equivalence point is nothing but volume of potassium dichromate required to oxidize 25 ml of the ferrous ammonium sulfate solution completely or if you if you have taken 20 ml then it is volume of the it, this is nothing but volume of the potassium dichromate required to oxidize 20 ml of the FA solution. In this case, we considered as, as if we have taken 25 ml of the ferrous ammonium sulfate, therefore equivalence point is nothing but the volume of potassium dichromate required to oxidize 25 ml of ferrous ammonium sulfate solution completely. So, this is the end, this will give us the accurate end point of the titration because end point of this titration is what? End point of this titration is the uh, exact volume of potassium dichromate required to oxidize 25 ml of ferrous ammonium sulfate solution. This is we can get by this equivalence point. So, therefore, what we do? We carry out potentiometry titration note down the change in potential during the course of titration, calculate delta E by delta V, then we plot a graph of delta E by delta V versus volume of potassium dichromate from the graph from, uh, and then you, you know, plot a graph from the, from the, we are going to get a graph curve like this from the peak of the curve dry perpendicular to x axis where it touches the x axis. This is called as equivalence point. This is nothing but the volume of potassium dichromate required to oxidize 25 ml of ferrous ammonium sulfate or 25 ml of ferrous sulfate to ferric sulfate completely. Once we get the equivalence point, we know the formula, standard formula, normal N1 V1 is equal to N2 V2, NFAS VFAS is equal to N potassium decremate, V potassium decremate. Therefore, normality of potassium decremate is equal to normality of, sorry, normality of FAS is equal to normality of potassium decremate into volume of potassium decremate divided by volume of FAS. Normality of potassium decremate will be known to us because we are using standard solution of potassium decremate into volume of potassium decremate is from the graph, right? How much of the volume of potassium decremate is required to oxidize 25 ml of the FAS completely, right? Divided by volume of FAS that we have taken 25. So, therefore, we can calculate. So, here we can calculate the normality of FAS by using this formula, right? To, uh, to, uh, to use this formula, we need to know volume of potassium decrement required. That we are finding out through the graph. Graph we are plotting by, by using the values we are getting out of the conduction of potentiometric titration with the help of potentiometer, right? And finally, once we get the normality, weight of FAS per dm cube is equal to normality of FAS into equivalent weight of FAS 30, that is 392. In this way, we can find out the weight of FAS per dm cube. So, this is how we are estimating FAS. So, if we are estimating the concentration of FAS in a solution of, in a, no, in a solution of FAS, by titrating this solution of FAS of unknown concentration against standard solution of potassium dichromate potentiometrically with the help of potentiometer. Clear? No. So, therefore, overall uh, potentiometric estimation of FAS by using standard solution of potassium dichromate can be done by carrying out the titration of FAS versus potassium dichromate potentiometrically. Do the titration find out the change in potential, note down the change in potential after the addition of every 0.5 ml of potassium dichromate, right? And after that, plot a graph of potential versus volume of potassium dichromate, you are getting a graph, another graph you plot, delta E by delta V versus volume of potassium dichromate you plot, you are going to get a graph like this. From this graph, you are getting equivalence point, that is nothing but volume of potassium dichromate required to complete the reaction. Using that calculate normality, using the normality calculate weight of FAS per dm cube. So, this is how we can calculate, we can estimate FAS solution potentiometrically by titrating FAS against standard solution of potassium dichromate. So, therefore, in this session, we try to understand what do we mean by potentiometric titration. How a potentiometric titration, what is the principle or theory behind the conduction of potentiometric titration, thereby it helps us to find out the end point of any 
any particular reaction. And uh, here they have, and we are in, as in a continuation of that, we discussed here, we understood what is the theory behind the potentiometric estimation, what is the instrumentation, and what are all the applications of potentiometric titration. So, what are all the important advantages of potentiometric titration we understood, and what kind of instrumentation we are using, calomel electrode, platinum electrode, and a, potentiometer, a device called as potentiometer we are going to use, and calomel and platinum electrodes together detect the potential of the solution send the electrical signals, signals are being processed inside the potentiometer and the finally the potential will be displayed in the digital form and what is the theory behind that we understood and finally we discussed about potentiometric estimation of FAS using standard potassium dichromate solution. So, by how to use that uh, concept, how to take the advantage of potentiometer and thereby how to carry out the estimation of FAS using standard potassium decremate solution potentiometrically. So, these are the few things we understood in this session that is uh, understood in this session and thereby we got an idea about the one of the instrumental methods of analysis that is potentiometric titration. So, major advantages, so I just uh, uh, major advantages. Uh, in there are some reaction processes where we may not have suitable indicators. There are some reactions where the reactants are colored. In that case also, we will be really finding it difficult to find out the end point of the titration. In those cases, we can take the help of potentiometric titration. And this potentiometric titration can be used for redox titrations, acid-based titrations as well as precipitation reactions. So, these are the few advantages of potentiometric titration technique. So, overall a potentiometric titration is the one where we find out the end point of a titration by observing change in potential during the course of titration and we understood how there is a change in potential during the course of any uh, reaction by, by taking the example of redox process and we also understood how the potential change occurring during the course of a reaction is detected and it is converted into electrical signals, thereby it is converted into uh, digital signals, thereby the potential change occurring during the course of any titration, how it is displayed in the digital form with the help of potentiometer and with the help of platinum and calomel electrodes also we understood. And to understand it further, we took the example of potentiometric estimation of FAS using standard potassium dichromate solution and we understood how uh, FAS can be estimated by using standard solution of potassium dichromate potentiometrically finally with the plot of a uh, uh, with the, by plotting a graph uh, how we can find out the uh, concentration of FAS potentiometrically. Thank you.